I'm David Liu, and this is PMR Mythbusters for Room Now's month on PMR. There, make room for PMR. There are lots of things often taught about PMR that are not actually completely true. So let's bust this myth today. T so today I'm joined by Dr. Rob Sparrow from the Hospital of Special Surgery. Needs no introduction. Welcome to Mythbusters. Thank you for having me. Great program. <laughs> so today's myth that we'll be addressing is PMR needs an elevated SED rate or CRP. So Dr. Spara, I, so let's say I have a patient come in, absolutely classical symptoms, shoulder, hip involvement, prolonged early morning stiffness, but has a SED rate of 20, a CRP of five. Does that patient have polymyalgia rheumatica? What do you think? So I think the sedimentation rate and CRP are incredibly helpful, but they are a piece of the puzzle. They are a piece of the history that you're listening or really more a sign that you're, you're measuring. But the clinical history in PMR, more than anything, helps lead you to the diagnosis. Um, I would say you definitely think twice about the diagnosis, and the vast majority of patients will have an elevated SED rate or CRP, but that doesn't mean everyone. And this is, you know, we could talk about studies that were done looking at this. And there were a bunch of studies that go back probably 20 years or more describing that maybe as many as 20% of patients in some, some studies can have a normal SED rate. It's far fewer actually that have a normal SED rate and a normal CRP. So the SED rate is much more twitchy and other things can affect it. Um, but if a patient has a classic story, and in my opinion, a dramatic response to low doses of corticosteroids, which I know is another miss, the myth that you may be trying to bust, that's part of your clinical story too. And we definitely see patients with PMR and it can be fairly classic PMR, certainly with the normal sedimentation rate, maybe a little less frequently with both the normal sed rate and CRP. So how common is this as a phenomenon? I mean, it seems like obviously having an elevated ESR and CRP really does help us a lot when it's there. What? How often are we talking about that it's not? So again, it you know it depends whether you're talking about in practice or when it's been studied. But if you look at studies of this, really anywhere between like five and twenty percent of patients can have a normal sed sedimentation rate. Also, we all have to remember of normal sedimentation rate might mean normal for that patient. All of us have been in an experience where we see somebody with pretty classic PMR, their sed rate is 29, and then their internist sends forward some older labs and their sed rates had been running two or three for years before that. So that's a sedimentation rate less than 30. That's technically a normal sedimentation rate, but for that patient, it's an elevated sedimentation rate. But we also see patients whose SED rates really are normal, including normal for them. And other things can contribute to that. But it's, again, it's uncommon, but it's not rare. So think of it this way. Even if 10% of patients had a normal sedimentation rate in CRP, you would not want to miss 10 out of 100 patients who are miserably uncomfortable with a syndrome that at least at the beginning is relatively easily treatable. So those steroids up front have all kinds of problems associated with them long-term, but up front, they give you a lot of information and they're dramatically effective in most patients. So to entertain the idea that you would be rigid about not entertaining the diagnosis of PMR in somebody with the normal sedimentation rate and CRP when their story is otherwise classic um, really wouldn't be conscionable for most of us. And this isn't just true for PMR. We know that in rheumatoid arthritis, a substantial no number of patients have seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. We're more careful in those patients that we're not missing something else, but it certainly happens. So that's, that's myth busted there. Now, let me ask you, what about for um, ongoing monitoring? What about flares? Is it possible to have a flare of PMR with a normal ESR or CRP? Yeah, so that both is something we have experienced with in practice, and there's also literature about it. But so the short answer is yes, you can flare and ha still have a normal sedimentation in C or CRP. I still find it a little bit helpful 
looking at how your sedimentation rate or CRP in the moment of flare compares to what it was before your flare. Um, so that can be a little bit helpful. On the other hand, we know that as you lower steroids, those markers tend to elevate. So it becomes a little bit less helpful in a discriminatory way. Um, often flares though are addressable with trivial doses of steroids that are even far shy of the doses we use up front. So whereas you may use a dose of 10, 15, or even 20 milligrams of prednisone or its equivalent as initial treatment, a flare, you may adjust the dose of prednisone by five milligrams or by two milligrams. So um, we think about it, but it can occur that a patient can flare still having a normal sedimentation rate um, in general, um, or even a normal sedimentation rate for them. Wonderful. So there we have it, myth busted. PMI does not need an elevated ESO or, or CRP. Dr. Spiro, thank you so much for joining us today on PMR Mythbusters. Thanks so much. Pleasure being here. And look out for plenty more on the RoomNow website and another episode to come of PMR Mythbusters.